there got to be a better way than this. Very nice. <laughs> Okay guys, uh, welcome to Educating the Modern. As you guys know, I really enjoy um, cast iron. I enjoy cooking out my cast iron. I think it's the best thing on the planet there is to cook in. And uh, the only problem with it is, is usually you need to go and buy older stuff in order to get really good quality. Um, well, there's nothing wrong with Lodge. I actually really like Lodge. And my favorite skillet is a Lodge cast iron. Um, and it's a modern cast iron. So. That may be, for you guys that are out there and collecting and things like that, that may be a little bit of a surprise to you, but the deal is, is I take my lodge and I machine it. Um, and that's the only reason the modern lodge cast iron uh, is not quite as desirable as the old stuff. Um, so, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to teach you guys the process. I've got with me right here a brand new lodge cast iron skillet. Now let's take a look at it. Okay, you can see all of the, um, the pits and the uh, imperfections in the casting. And all this is, is, you know, these things are sand casted. And all this is, is a lack of sanding smooth. That's the only reason that your lodge is, um, is considered inferior to the old Griswolds and Wagner wares. If you, uh, for the real collector, you'll know that uh, Lodge also produced a lot of really high quality cast iron back in the day. All it was, the only difference was that they actually sanded it. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here today. Now you're going to need a few very specific tools. First off, don't forget your safety goggles because this is a nasty, messy job and it's so messy, definitely you got to have at least a dust mask or a respirator if you got it. But if you've done this at home before, most likely uh, what you have used is one of these. It's a DA sander. Nothing special. Um, most people have them if you're a do-it-yourselfer at all. They're good little things to use and have and use, but it's not really going to be enough to do the job on this cast iron. Um, what you really need is a big old polishing sander like this. Um, any, mine's a craftsman, whatever, it, it doesn't matter. But it's got a six inch um, uh, disc set up here. Uh, we use sticky discs that stick right on there. And all this one does is it rotates, it spins. You could probably, if you're only doing one or two pans, you'd get by also by um, getting those, um, those adapters that go on a drill. But the thing is, the DA sander is not powerful enough so that whenever you really push down on it, it really digs in and cuts through that cast iron. Um, but it is still needed um, to get in nooks and crannies and things like that. So, uh, definitely you want to have one. The third the third tool is an angle grinder. Now this angle grinder is set up with a paddle wheel and the paddle wheel uh, is, has been used before. If you use a brand new paddle wheel definitely get like a 120 grit or higher if you can because these things actually will just gouge at it. So you want to use them very sparingly only to get in the corners where you can't normally get with the other stuff. So with that being said, let's start this.
It's getting there. Okay guys, the first run there is 40 grit. And now I'm switching up to a new pad and it's 80 grit. So we're gonna keep doing this, same thing. We start off with the angle grinder. The angle, angle grinder is a 120 grit flat disc, but it is actually used and worn a little bit. So it's probably more likely about 180 grit. But um, then we jump to our polisher sander, which is strictly an orbital spinning pattern. And uh, we go from 40, now we're at 80, then we'll go to 120. And then we'll jump on the D8. Okay, now we jump onto the Orbital or DA sander with 320 grit. This really smooths it out nice. Alright. Let's get this into the light so you guys can see it a little bit better. How dirty am I? <laughs> now that is smooth. Alright. Now doing it this way, um, you'll get little, you see right here, you can see a few little gouges and stuff like that. And that stinks, you know, it really does. But, um, I'm doing it one off and I'm telling you what, this is way smoother than any Griswold, Wagnerware, Vintage Lodge, I don't care what it is. This is nice. Okay guys, I did wash my hands, but other than that, I'm completely filthy. And I did this for a reason. I wanted you to see that I came straight up from my garage um, and now I'm getting ready to demonstrate what this stuff is like. All I'm doing is cleaning it off with a paper towel. All right, and I'm gonna oil it up just a little bit. This is just olive oil. You wanna oil it just so that you can get that initial clean on it. Um, another thing that really helps too is a little bit of salt. wiped out pretty darn clean. Um, what I'll do now is I'll give it one layer of, um, of coating with lard or uh, vegetable oil, whatever. Um, I prefer to use lard, but whenever I'm doing this for somebody else and they're a vegetarian, they're not going to like that. So they get to choose if they want vegetarian, uh, Crisco, you know, or lard. So, um, but before I do that, I'm going to give you a demonstration of how slick this junk is. So, here we go. All I've got here is some canola cooking spray. There we go. A lot of it at the beginning there. It'll soak in. It's a long process.
I'm using eggs to show you because to me there is no better test for a skillet than how well eggs slide on the surface. Now what you're beginning to see here, look at that. See how the air bubbles up underneath there? You know nothing is sticking at all because the bubbles coming up. Look at that. Oh, man, that's slick. Now, I know that a lot of people have wagon wares or Griswolds or old lodges, just old vintage pans that they can do this in. But this is a brand new lodge. Let's see that. There we go. So hopefully this was very helpful to you. Now you understand why things stick on your lodge skillet, or maybe you've got another name brand that's a little rough as well. Um, all you gotta do is sand and polish it up. If you don't have the tools or uh, equipment to do it, or the know-how, or you just simply don't wanna do it, you can go to my website, make a purchase. It's educatingthemodern.com. Check for prices and availability there. And uh, until next time, you're welcome.